Shipyard Iron, as we all know, is the most unbelievable organization helping those in need. We salute you. <laughs> Friends, I just want to share with you a very short perspective on the mitzvah of charity of tzedakah. Because often we, we look at it and we say to ourselves, okay, there are people in need, and thank God everybody in this room has the wherewithal, the resources to help. So, of course, if you, you have the resources, then help somebody in need. But the mitzvah of tzedakah is so much more profound. What our sages teach us is that it is, has a figure. You see, this is, this is the beauty of the halakha. This is the gift that we have to be the recipients of Judaism as our heritage that has been handed down for all of these generations. Because we know from our sages what is the minimum definition of generosity. Because a person can write a check and they feel generous. I just gave money. It's my money. Gave 1,000 rand, 20,000 rand, 180,000 rand. A person can feel very generous. What is the minimum definition of generosity? Our sages are very clear. 10%. In fact, some say up to 20%. But let's go with the lenient view. 10%. 10% of after, of after tax income. Anything below 10% is, is regarded to be ungenerous. In other words, it's a minimum definition. And, and actually what our sages teach us, it's even more profound than that. We don't even own that 10% because we have a silent partner in our businesses we have a silent partner in the work that we do, and that silent partner is the best partner you could ever wish for in anything that you do in your life, and that is Hashem Himself. He's our partner, and He owns that 10%, and He says that 10% must go to those in need to support the poor, to support the teaching and the spread of Torah, to support the infrastructure necessary to run a Jewish community, to protect lives, that is what that 10% has to go to. It doesn't belong to us. And so then, when you're working out your finances and you say, okay, 10% doesn't even belong to me, then you've actually got a real problem. How do you find worthy recipients that can, you can allocate your full 10% to? I can tell you that the business leaders that I speak to who do give their 10%, and I know the directors of this of this uh, organization do. Their biggest, the biggest question that they have is how do you allocate the money? Because you, you've got to give it away, but now you've got to find good people to give it to. Because it's not yours, it belongs to Hashem, it belongs to the people. So then when a worthy recipient comes, when an organization like Yad Aaron comes along and says, I need help, oh, that's an opportunity. It's not, well, I feel bad, I, I've got so much, I came here, this is the car I arrived in, they need, people need food. It's not about that. It's that Hashem is our partner. He has the 10%. And friends, I can tell you this. I'm clear on it. The Vilna Gaon actually said it. He said that if everyone gave their 10%, there'd be no poverty. I'm sure of this. If everyone in our community gave 10%, the biggest problem we would have as our community is what to do with the surplus. Seriously. And that's a, something that we all need to think about. And allow me to, to end with this thought. It is the greatest gift that we can give ourselves by giving 10%. The greatest gift that we can give ourselves. Uh, the, the Shulchan Aruch says, the only thing that we can test Hashem is that when we give the 10%, that He gives it back to us and then some more. But never mind getting it back in this world. I venture to say, before you tonight, and it's based on the Talmud, the greatest investment you will ever make in your life is the money that you give away. Because you know what? It's the only money that we take with us when we leave this world. Everything else that we accumulate in this world, anything else that we accumulate in this world, we leave behind. We can try and hold on to it, we can put it in trust funds, can find the most elaborative, elaborate, imaginative tax schemes which comply with the letter of the law exactly. But 
at the end, after all of those schemes are said and done, it doesn't come with us when we leave this world. It stays behind, except the money we give to tzedakah, the money that we give to the needy, the money that we give to support Torah, the money that we give to Hashem's 10%, that money is our mitzvah. It's your mitzvah as the giver forever, forever. And you take it with you forever. That is the greatest investment, and it's a guaranteed investment. No, nothing else is guaranteed. In the uncertainty of this world, anyone who tells you, I have a guaranteed investment for you, you can be certain they're either a fool or a liar. There's no such thing as a guaranteed investment. Take that from an investment broker. So what is a guaranteed investment? Only one thing, the money we give away, because that is stored, as the Gomorrah says, the Talmud says, that is stored in a place, then nobody can touch it. And it produces revenues forever, and you take it with you when you leave this world. And so what an opportunity. And so tonight we're talking about an organization, Yad Aron, that gives so much and makes a difference to so many people's lives. But we're also talking about a broader concept, that as this Jewish community, something that we can all start to think about, committing to that 10%, giving it with a full heart, looking for opportunities to give, realizing that Hashem gives it back to us in this world because He's our partner, and more importantly, it's an eternal investment in the world to come. And so, friends, tonight is a celebration of the mitzvah of tzedakah. How fortunate and how privileged we all are that we can fulfill that mitzvah that Hashem has given us. The special, magnificent mitzvah that is a merit for each and every single one of us. And may it be a merit for our magnificent Jewish community. God bless you and thank you.